Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another history lesson. You guys and girls all seem to really like the year one Epic 7 video, so I'll keep doing them. Especially because it's a pretty good time to talk about one of the characters since, well, we have a side story involving her right now. So in 2024, we have Miracle Maid Kingdom, a side story centered around the character Tamarin. And five years prior, back in 2019, in year one of Epic 7, the original Tamarin debuted. And, well, the character is probably not quite what you actually think. So that's what we're going to talk about today is Tamarin's release window. Because, well, again, if you are somebody who's been playing Epic 7 for any period of time, Tamarin to you is probably a super popular character. One of the best characters in the whole game. Probably like the best support, best soul weaver that PvP has ever seen. It's the character that a lot of you, people told you to probably re-roll for or get as fast as possible in a new player guide. Right? That's the ex expectations that you have for this character. And again, what she actually was at the start, it probably is not quite what you're thinking it is. So once again, using the power of Cecilia Bot in their ultimate timeline, let's take a look back on the time period that was Tamarin's release window, which was February 7th, 2019 to February 20th. But before we jump into that, we have to rewind the clock just a little bit because, well, some pretty big stuff happened on January 29th, 2019. So I would be remiss to not at least talk about the balance patch from the 29th and the 30th of January before jumping into Tamarin because it's a pretty big deal. And as you can see from this patch, uh, we got Guild Wars, baby. <laughs> like, this was the patch. Right? If you're a Vic Chun fan, a Lucent Azure enthusiast, this is where your favorite content creator was born. This was such a big deal at the time because the only PvP that we had was regular arena, right? We didn't have World Arena, we didn't have Guild Wars. So before it was just one versus one, player versus player. But now it's Guild versus Guild. GVG, baby. That is a huge deal. And as you can tell, it was definitely heavily promoted. We got this unique banner here like a sick piece of artwork i believe they actually offered this as a mouse pad in the smile gate store and i if i could find it i'll put it up on the screen but i'm pretty sure there was even like a trailer to hype the hell out of this thing people were really excited for the prospect of gvg like it was like a big thing in actuality though it's not really anything different than what you're probably expecting if you look at the guild war schedule right Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, you set up for the Guild War, and then in Wednesdays, Fridays, and Mondays, you actually attack. And based on how you do, if you scroll down here, uh, you you get uh, you get this new reward called Mystic Medals, which you use to summon for Moonlight Five Stars off of a new banner called the Mystic Summon. Right, that is what it is there for. So yeah, not quite I think what some of us were expecting, but it became the staple the new hotness of the game right the same fixture that we've always known and love there was one thing that uh was different about guild wars compared to uh now though and that is the fact that as you know you have a stronghold you have three fortresses and then you have the smaller bases that are around right the defense towers now back in the day if memory serves me correctly how you would actually, the optimal way to do Guild Wars was to destroy all the smallers, then work on the larger towers, then the Stronghold. Because, well, the Stronghold gave less than if you just attacked the larger towers. Like, there was no incentive for you to actually attack the larger towers. This obviously would be later changed in a, a different update, I believe, at the start of, like, Season 1 or Season 2 of Guild Wars. Someone who's more familiar with the, vi the, uh, the history of Guild Wars, they'd probably know quite a bit better. But upon release... Uh, Guild Wars was not quite the same that you know in terms of like what the optimal strategy is for getting the most amount of points and winning. That was definitely different. But otherwise, again, it's still, for the most part, the same format that you all know and love. I think this is also really funny, by the way. They're like talking about the defenses. You can see like we got Roz, Rose, Silk, Cecilia, Shadow Rose. Remember I told you Shadow Rose, really strong opener at this time. And then you got the the homie over here with the level one ML Ken, free to play, by the way, in the bug. This is like a really funny image when you look at it. Like they got the got the Tristan Wolf here also behind the uh, the text box. So pretty funny looking teams, right? So 
that again, we got Guild Wars, and the primary reward was Mystic Medals, which is important because we got the Mystic Summon. This is the first patch that ever had the Mystic Summon. So all of your your stress and your woes and your complaining about how hard it is to get ML5s, they all originate from this damn patch, right? Because the system was not any worse than it is now, but it's certainly not any better than it is now. I mean, I guess you could say the four-star pity, thanks, Genizod. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's it. It's it's still the, the 201 summons to get the character. And yes, you still got the same amount of Mystic Battles like, that you do now. It's like one and a half summons per war, right? So yeah, the, the Mystic Banner was not super well-received. Because of just how difficult it was perceived to get the Moonlight 5-star heroes. And also, the very first 5-star uh, character that's on the banner here is Specimen Says. Which, uh, well, let's take a look at what he actually looked like, right? A deadly weapon modeled after Says. He was created by a scientist who narrowly escaped Says's rampage. He strives to prove his worth through Cez's demise. All right. Light Storm. Here we go, Light Storm. An attack skill that deals huge damage to the target. If the target is stunned, the attack will penetrate the defense. Hey, that looks the same. Evil Claws. An AOE skill that increases the caster's combat readiness. Hmm, Dreamy not quite the same. A basic attack skill with a chance to stun the target. That also looks the same, right? Specimen says is a light elemental thief that can deal huge amounts of damage as long as certain conditions are met. If Lightstorm is used after stunning the target with an ally's assistance, Specimen says can penetrate the target's defense by 100% and inflict extensive damage. In order to inflict huge AoE damage, utilize Evil Claw's Soul Burn effect. Yay, that looks the same too. So yeah, the character is not too much different than how the character is on live, right? The big difference is there's no stun here on Evil Claws, right? And there's no reset on Lightstorm if it actually gets a kill. Those are pretty much the two big changes from what he, uh, you know, started as to what he kind of ended as. And we'll talk more about Specimen Says in my How to Play Specimen Says guide, which should be available tomorrow after this video uh, goes up. So, you know, if you're keen for that, you want to see it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, all those wonderful things. But yes, otherwise, Specimen says, like, not crazy different than what he is on live. He was used by some cleavers, but not exactly like a must-have character. So for a new system where the packs are, let's be honest, not really that great, very, very expensive to get the character, a lot of people, myself included, didn't really roll for the character because, like, we just didn't think that it was that crazy of a character. Like, it was solid, but... It looked like it was going to be really, really hard to get a character out of the Mystic Banner. Even harder than the Galaxy Summons that we have now, right? Because the Galaxy Summons are already very hard to get specific ML5s. Alongside of Spez, we also got Kitty Clarissa, who was uh, another four-star character. And if you look at her skill set, you can see it's not too much different, right? If you have the Loveliness buff on S3, which is a cleanse, uh, then you get a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack. And the uh, Meow, I'm angry, right? The... Uh, Decrease buff duration and unhealable. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, pretty much similar to what we used to have, right? Or like what we still have. It's not too much different. Now, Kitty Clarissa, people were pretty hyped when this character came out because, you know, it's cat girl. People love cat girls, right? The thing is, uh, she's in the Mystic Summons and the Galaxy Summons, so it's kind of hard to actually get this character. She's very, very rare. Uh, I remember I pulled her off of a Galaxy Summon when she came out and... I was unsure of what to do because remember, MLs are so rare. I'm like one of the few people that has it. So I just, I didn't know what to do with the character. And a lot of people felt pretty much the same way, right? You didn't really see Kitty Clarissa get used anywhere or doing anything except by like enthusiasts who just really, really liked the design. And that's a shame because this character was again, popular. I'm fairly confident the VA Abby Trot also had some kind of like video talking about Kitty Clarissa and like haste and how they were the voice of it. And they hope we were excited about it. And in fact, there was posters of this character given out at the Epic seven meetup just a couple months after this release, right at the end of the summer. Uh, so yeah, again, popular character, but just, she didn't really, you know, 
have any impact. Obviously, later on down the line, like two years later, people started to realize one of the better PvE characters in the game once like Expeditions came out and once Abyss started to get really, really hard. But up until then, Kitty Clarissa remained largely unused. And that's a shame because, again, if we as a player base were, uh, you know, knew, know then what we know now, obviously, I think the character would have thrived quite a bit more in the game's history. So the final thing that I want to talk about in this patch that's kind of insane is uh, the Hunt 11 stages, right? Because up until this point, all we have is Wyvern 10, Banshee 10, Golem 10. We don't have anything else. So if you scroll down here, you can see stage 10. So this is what you used to get, and it's probably what you still get for Wyvern 10, right? And the other Hunt 10s. So as you can see, you get anywhere from 55 to 85 gear, right? Imagine beating wyvern and getting like a 55 helmet like it's just worthless right you just don't want it on top of that you could only get right side pieces up to level 70 so remember when i told you that it was just hard to get rings and necklaces i wasn't kidding and then obviously you still have the 85 materials and whatnot 85 materials is largely where you're getting the vast majority of your stuff you're you're, you're able to craft 85 stuff and that's kind of all you have because like relying on the drops it's not really worth it. Keep in mind in Hunt 10, and this will carry over into Hunt 11 too, um, the rate of which you get blue gear is quite high. Like in in now, in 2024, you get a lot of purple gear and some red gear. Back then it was you get a lot of blue gear and some purple gear, almost never, very rarely red gear, right? So red gear is really hard to get. But this is a big jump forward, Hunt 11, because as you can see here, we finally have the ability to get 85 rings and necklaces. There was no way to get 85 rings and necklaces before this. So this was a huge deal, right? We didn't have reforges, but like, could you imagine just having to use 55 rings and necklaces on everything? It makes the freebie stuff that we get for new players now look like the most amazing busted gear of all time. And again, blues are super common from these hunts. Like most people... Their gear is blue gear with some purple gear. Very rarely do they have red gear. It, you will almost never see anybody outside of like Mega Whales have like six red pieces on any of their characters uh, up until this time. Unless it's like stuff they got from Abyss or it's like, oh, uh, they have maybe like a couple of like 55 or 70 red rings and necklaces. Um, and then you have obviously the rest of your stuff uh, be epic from just like stuff you've crafted. So yeah, it's this is a big leap forward for the actual game engine. Another thing I want to highlight at this time, because we'll we'll talk about it a bit later, but you know how like purple gear and stuff, at plus 12, that's when you get the fourth substat? During this time, that was not the case. You would basically get a piece of blue gear, it'd have two subs on it, at plus three, it'd get the third, at plus six, it would get the fourth. And now that's the problem, because you don't know until plus six if the piece of gear is even worth rolling, right? We talk about speed checking, how you have a one-third chance of hitting speed until you get to plus 12. Well, what happens if at plus three, you get the four substat? Now it's even harder to speed check the piece because, well, you don't actually get to see if it's going to roll speed until plus six. So, it, yeah, we've come a long way in the gearing. It needs uh, to go a bit further, I think, at this point, especially in year five, if they hope to actually retain and gain new players, right? But I just want you to understand how bad the gearing system actually is. I know I said it was the last thing, but also Mascot Hazel was in this patch. We're going to move past her. Obviously, she's much better now in 2024. Optimal Rift character. Really good in a number of uh, scenarios. But back here, back in 2019, there's no reason to play a monocolored team. Because uh, even here in Haunts, right? Haste and a like multicolored team was considered the best thing you could play for Wyvern 10. It wasn't until we got these Hunt 11s that the perception started to change of, oh, maybe I should play an all-blue team. Oh, maybe I should play like an all-green team. And the mechanics of these fights definitely reinforced that. But up until this point, there was no reason to play a monocolor team, and Fire was not considered a very good element. Because remember, Deanne and Kisei are really good at this time. So, like, why would you play red? So, uh, Hazel, obviously better than we gave her credit. But compared to Falcon or Clurry or, like, Commander Lorena, which were busted... This character was just okay, and as a result, kind of seen as a flop, at least for some people. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's finally move on to the February 7th patch where we get to finally talk about Tamarin. And I'll show you her trailer, and let's see if you can spot the big change that exists on this character. Because a lot of her changes and reasons why she's not the way you think she is 
are all behind the scenes stuff that we'll talk about and is not readily apparent in the trailer. But there's at least one major thing, so let's see if you can catch it. An idol that brings hope and joy through her beautiful music. She's so upbeat. She has great magical talent and can harness magic with her voice. She transforms her appearance on stage with the blooming pendant and becomes more dynamic and lively. All right, before transformation, here we go. Shining Star, a skill that dispels debuffs from allies and transforms Tamarin into an idol. Man, the voice Song is so of the good forest. on this character. A skill that recovers the health of all allies. I'm scared. Serene Tune. A basic attack skill that attacks an enemy while healing the ally with the lowest health. Alright, let's see. Do, we, do you spot it, chat? Climax. A buff skill that increases the attack and combat readiness of all allies. I'll do my best. Did you catch it? <laughs> Climax doesn't heal. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal, no? That's kind of one of the things that makes Tamarin and Tamarin. Sing Together. A basic attack skill that dispels buffs from all enemies and triggers a dual attack. Alright, here's, here's my favorite part of this entire thing. Watch the Proctor's Punishment in this because they're trying to use Tamarin in PvP. Tamarin is a Soul Weaver who can be used to heal and buff your team. She can dispel debuffs from allies with Shining Star, and transform herself to provide attack like, buffs. Alright, our team is about to die. Tamarin, you're our healer. Save us! At the same time. Because her skill climax can increase the combat readiness of all allies. There's no healing. There's no healing. Allies, a powerful onslaught of attacks can ensue. Sing together dispels Ready? buffs from all enemies and triggers a dual attack Pro from the Proctor's allies. Proctor's punishment, just like Proctor's with the punishment, highest attack, just destroy making everyone. the skill highly effective against teams that rely on buffing. <laughs> It's like everyone's gonna die. Tamarin, save us. And she's just like, I refuse. <laughs> yeah, so Tamarin, um, if you haven't guessed by now, uh, she was trash upon her release. And it's not for like the reasons that you probably think. Let's read her kit and then I'll jump over to the February 13th patch so you can kind of understand why this character was so bad, right? Because even here in the original patch notes that she came out in, it's not quite so obvious, right? Serene Tune attacks the enemy, heals the ally with the lowest health. Amount recovery increases proportional to allies' max health, decreases cooldown of Shining Star by one turn, right? And then Sing Together is still uh, dispel all buffs, AoE attack, trigger a dual attack. Song of the Forest, still an AoE heal. Climax, attack buff, CR push, there is no healing on it. That's kind of a big deal. Shining Star. Now, this is not obvious in the video. But, as you can see, before performing, dispels all debuffs inflicted on all allies and recovers the caster to max health and grants an extra turn. The caster becomes an idol for three turns and performs a concert. Begins every battle with full cooldown count. So, if you take Tamarin into Abyss, you can't stall to have idol ready for floor two. Because as soon as you go into floor two, Shining Star resets to nine turns if you take tamarin into labyrinth and you kill the trash and then are like oh i have idle ready for the boss no you don't as soon as you go into the boss shining star resets so you can imagine why people were uh not happy of, with the state of this character upon release because shining star was nearly worthless right you go into adventure you take like two or three times around with your like you know, your slow team to kill the first wave. Oh, I'm about to use idol. And then you get to the second out of three fights. Oh, okay, I don't have idol. Um, it reset. And so, if you played Tamer in an adventure, well, you didn't ever got idol. And then you'd play her in hunt, and then you'd realize, well, Tien heals better and gives barriers and better team cycling. And by the time I have idol, the hunt's already dead. So why would I play the Tamer in there? And then, like I said, in Abyss... I can't stall for idol, so like, what's the point? So, Shining Star was just a completely worthless skill. You could just never use it. It was absolute trash. And there's a couple other problems with the characters as well. So let's jump on over to the February 13th update. And this is obviously the update that gave us the girl Luna, right? And uh, we know how much we love that character, right? 
Uh, I did a whole video on her. If you haven't seen it, go check it down uh, in the video's description. Really, really impactful character. Probably the most important character that has ever released in Epic 7. Again, not going to spend too much uh, more time on Luna, my love. But yeah, this was a, a pretty big patch because, well, again, we got her. And we also, as you can see, we'll scroll down past the original Valentine side story, which, by the way, this is the story that gave us Lydica. So if you're wondering when we got Lydica, this is basically uh, that time period. Like, she came out the next patch, I would say, on February 20th. And she was pretty popular. I think people don't realize, like, how popular Lydica actually is as a character. Uh, I'll put the graph up on your screen from the Luna video. But as you can see, she is the second uh, I believe most popular character, at least uh, this made the second most amount of money behind Luna, right? So Lydica, still a very popular character. Still doesn't surprise me that we got Blooming Lydica. The Lydica fans really like Lydica. Honestly, you guys have kind of been done dirty outside of Faithless Lydica because your character has not traditionally ever been very good. But I respect uh, the people who enjoy Lydica who are Lydica enjoyers. But yeah, scrolling past this original Valentine side story... We get to see, oh man, here we go. Hero balancing changes. Whew. Took a while to get to this hike. But yeah, they used to just put the, the balance changes like just in a normal Wednesday patch, like unannounced. Like, hey, yeah, uh, we noticed Mercedes isn't good. Here's a 20% damage buff. Seems good. Oh, Celestial Mercedes, yeah, needs a 20% damage boost. All right? Uh, Zorada's not performing as good as we want. Here's a, uh, we'll give him a 43% damage increase, right, to his move. So this is like a, 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 what I'm talking about. Like, they would just do these little tweaks. They'd notice the data and make tweaks, right? Now, here you go. We get the Tamarin. Look at this, man. This this is the crazy part. Because this, again, is during, like, the right? So you can see this is Tamarin. And if we go up here to the tab, you can see this is the February 13th update. Look at the timeline. Like, Tamarin's banner is still live. There have been very few times in Epic 7's history where they've actually balanced a character that is still on the banner. Like, off the top of my head, it's like Elvira, Tamarin, Edward Ulrich, Architect Laika. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if I missed another one, but that's kind of it, right? Like, this is a very rare occurrence, and this is the first time that they actually did it. They buffed a character while they were still live on the banner, because at this point... You had the whole, the, the Luna Wen crowd that wasn't spending. And then Tamarin, like I said, the people who were early adopters realized she's kind of garbage. So people really wanted a fix. And, well, super creative. They responded real fast on trying to actually fix this issue. So, first thing they changed, as you can see here. Her soul burn was changed. So that is an AoE heal. It used to be increases damage dealt. Now, quick show of hands. How many of you are playing Tamarin for her damage? Not for the dual attack from the highest stat. Like, Tamarin herself, her actual damage. Because if you remember, Tamarin's a Sagittarius Soul Weaver. That's the highest attack Soul Weaver in the game. They wanted you to kind of use her as a damage dealer. Like, the stat line is very aggressively slanted with high attack. In order to actually leverage how high her attack is here, they gave her this Soul Burn. Which is wild, right? Like, it's a healer. Like, I don't care how much damage it deals. So now, also, this is the other big thing we talked about. Shining Star. It uh, it only goes uh, on cooldown, cooldown count on the very first battle for anything. So now she starts to be kind of good in Adventure. She becomes super great in Abyss from just this change, right? You can consider using her in, like, Labyrinth. Yeah, she doesn't heal on Climax, potentially. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but, like, this alone would have made people at least happy and, like, want to give her a chance. But that wasn't enough. We went quite a bit further. Song of the Forest had its healing buffed. And to really hammer home how garbage Tamron was on release, look at this. We increased the healing multiplier by 65%. Can you imagine... Oh yeah, D D we noticed Dustina is just not healing enough. We uh we increased our healing by sixty five percent, bro. That's like that's a crazy increase, right? Like we just look up here, twenty percent, ten percent, like forty three, kind of high, right? But 10, 20, 20, 20, you know, a lot of small tweaks. Sixty five is a huge change. Like that is a big, big change to how much healing that we got. So Tamarin, after just this change alone, and also the fact that Climax now has recovers health, um, she became the character that you all probably are familiar with now. The 
the force that is Tamarin, the best PvE character in the game. So she basically went from being the worst five star ever released up until this point to the best PvE character of all time in the span of one week. That's some crazy whiplash, right? Now, here's the thing. Going back to what we start, talked about at the start of the video, we are currently playing through Miracle Made Kingdom as this video is being recorded, and we know that there's going to be some kind of new Tamron. Is that a skin? Is it a limited unit? Who knows? But what would be really funny is if history repeated itself, and the new Tamron, the Miracle Made Tamron, if she was really bad, and then a week later they hotfixed her, and then she became ridiculous. If history repeated itself, I think that would be really, really funny. I mean, at least that's that's my opinion. Like, I think it would be funny at this point. I love it when there's, like, you know, uh, cycles or things are cyclical. It'd be really, really, really funny to see that. But, yeah, that's a quick look back at Tamron. Probably not the character that you expected. You're probably surprised if you've never seen this. Like, again, soul bird damage increase. No healing. Uh, when she does have healing, it's just trash. Impossible to get into idle mode. That's the kind of stuff you probably... Wouldn't have expected. Again, Tamarin, there was a point where she really was that bad. I, I do remember. She was actual garbage. I remember watching, like, Welchy player, and I was like, wow, this character is bad. My friend Carol, yeah, this character is bad. <laughs> so, yeah, again, just another fun look down memory lane. If you enjoyed it, as always, let me know down in the comments below. We'll keep doing these as long as you keep enjoying them. And stay tuned tomorrow for How to Play Specimen Says. And again, I want to thank you also all to everyone who came out last night on the YouTube and the Twitch streams to watch me pull and test Laia. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for all the support. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.